Hey, so I'm going to introduce LaTeX, which is the math typesetting language that you'll use to typeset your homeworks. And you will learn a lot of this on your own. Um, usually, like with many forms of coding, you learn a lot by trial and error and just trying to get things to work. Um, but I'll introduce you a little bit here. So here I'm on overleaf.com. Um, this will allow you, this will give you a sort of in-browser web app LaTeX editor and compiler. So it'll compile the tech into a PDF for you. Um, if you want to, you can set up something on your local machine, but this is what I'm advocating, is to use Overleaf, um, because it's guaranteed to work if you have an internet connection. Okay, so just uh, go to Overleaf and make an account, and I'm going to log in and come back. So here I am logged in, and I can just make a new uh, blank project and give it a name. So this will be math example. And you can see I have sort of two windows, the area where I code things up, and the area over here where you can see the compiled PDF. So this is the LaTeX code. And you can see, like, there's a lot of boilerplate kind of stuff that you would include in any document. So this document class is article. You can change it to other things like book or whatever, but probably you're just going to leave it as article. And this for input encoding. And then these are begin document and end document. And then in between here is where you're going to put your actual document. So you can leave this title stuff if you want. Um, if you want to set your, you know, you can see title stuff here. If you want to set those things, you can set them here. So I can be like homework two, and then put my name. And for the date, sometimes I like to use backslash today, which makes the date be whatever is today's date. So here you it's set it to April 5th, which is when I'm recording this video. Um, and this backslash make title, that's what actually makes this title. So I can delete this and then recompile. And you see, even though this information is set, no title is created. Okay, so let me leave it without a title. And let me leave it without a section. So I just have a place to demonstrate uh, some basics about LaTeX. Um, so actually here I've Google searched Overleaf LaTeX tutorial because I recommend uh, looking at this for generally learning about LaTeX. And they have a really good learn LaTeX in 30 minutes, uh, which really just uh, quickly gets you up to speed with basic things. So I actually recommend looking over this and what I'm going to do in this video is basically focus on specific things that you'll do a lot in Math 8. So, okay, well, if I just type stuff, like stuff, and compile, then you'll see, you'll see the stuff appear here. And if I want to do some math, so first here is just some sentence. Well, yeah, first let me show you that LaTeX doesn't really care about how many spaces you put. So here is a lot of space, but not really. So I'm going to hit recompile. And you can see that all of the spaces I put here did not show up. Um, that's because LaTeX is actually deciding how to space things out. It doesn't care what I think about spaces. Um, what I put for spaces here is just uh, for my own aesthetics with the code. Um, so you can, and you can also see that the new line here, there's a, I put a new line here and it didn't care about it. If I put two new lines, then it'll interpret it as a new paragraph. So you can see now there is space, but the amount of space between them is whatever is the um, paragraph skip value. So if I put a lot of spaces here, I'm not going to see any more space in the compiled result. If I want to see more space, um, so 
If I put at least one space here, there are different paragraphs. If I want to set that amount of spacing between paragraphs, then I should set length, parse skip, and then choose how long I want it to be. So I'm going to choose maybe 2, two EM. An EM, I'm actually not certain what an EM is, but I, th I think it means the amount of space that one line is. So 2 EM makes there be two lines between any two paragraphs. So now if I do a bunch of stuff in this paragraph, and then create a new paragraph, and a new paragraph, then each paragraph will have two lines of space there. If I set it to 1 EM, each paragraph will have one line of space. Okay, so text text kind of goes to text. And there are ways of setting up spacing. Anytime you have a blank line with nothing on it, that means I'm going to have a new paragraph. Uh, actually, let me leave this at, at 1 EM. So I actually recommend putting something like this so that your paragraphs are separated by some non-zero amount of space. Um, now, what about math? So let me, let me leave this one. So there are two ways to do math, inline or display. So here's some inline math. So let's say x equals 7. And you can see it there. And let me zoom in a little bit. I don't know if this is large enough. I think that's a little better. So, uh, yeah, the inline math is kind of on the same line. And you can see I just put it between dollar signs. And that's how you do LaTeX. You just put any math you have between dollar signs. And all you need to know is a bunch of math commands. The LaTeX commands are all these things that start with a backslash. All you need to know is a bunch of math commands for how to do uh, certain things. So here are some things. Um, for the capital Greek letters that are showing up as propositions, um, the command for them is backslash and then the Greek letter, but with a capitalized first letter. So like phi, psi, or phi, psi, as I sometimes call them. You make like that. So there's the capital Greek letters. And if I want to do an implication symbol, then that's backslash right arrow. There phi implies psi. There you can see. Um, let's say I want to do psi and omega. The and symbol is done with a wedge. And notice I'm capitalizing the first letter here. If I don't capitalize it, if I do this, then I'm going to get the wrong result. I'll get the lowercase versions of the letters, which is not, not what you want. Not what you want for proposition placeholders. Okay, and how to do or and not. So here's or, you do v. And for not, you can do neg. Let's say not sigma. So there's or and not. And um, another thing you might want to do is set up some bold text, like say you want to make a claim. Claim. If, and then I'll write some stuff, but here, uh, the point is backslash text bf, that will make things bold. And it doesn't matter that I'm putting a new line here again, it's not going to show up. So here I can say if phi implies C and V implies Omega then V implies C and Omega 
so it ends up looking like that. Then I have to do two lines if I want an actual new line, and then text. Maybe I want an italics for the word proof. Then I can write my proof. Hopefully with a few paragraphs. And what about when the proof is done? So what I would do when the proof is done is put backslash QED like this, but it's not working. Um, what I want it to do is create that little box that I put after a proof is finished. And here overleaf is giving me the error, undefined control sequence. That means this is not a real command. So I need to go back up and include the right package. What the problem is, um, this command is defined in some specific package. So I'm going up here and then including the needed package. This one is called AMS theorem. And now I shouldn't get the error. And there's the box at the end of the proof. So uh, I'll probably give you a template with a bunch of packages, like the, the ones that you'll probably need for a lot of stuff. And maybe I'll include in the template a lot of the symbols that, that you'll need to do stuff for, for our particular course. So again, you don't have to use Overleaf. Uh, if you want, you can go to uh, the LaTeX project website and just look up how to install LaTeX for your system, Linux, Mac, or Windows. Um, but I mean, even the LaTeX websites actually suggest different uh, services like Overleaf here. Um, one advantage of using Overleaf is this share button here. You can use this to, uh, you know, you just put in someone's email and you can share with them. Or you can turn on link sharing and then you can share a link. So in a discussion on Nectar, you could just drop a link and be like, okay, here, can you look at this? And I'm stuck on this part. Or does anyone want to collaborate with me on this or that? Um, and you can choose if people can edit. The people you share with can use the link to edit your work or if they they can only view it. So it's pretty good for collaboration. So a lot of things are done in LaTeX. Um, the the notes for the course are written in LaTeX. You probably found that figured that out. Um, probably a lot of textbooks, math textbooks that you've used in the past, have been done with LaTeX. Um, if you've ever used WebWork or similar like. Um, math homework online systems, the way they display math often is LaTeX. Um, what else? Uh, on Nectar, if you just stick some math between dollar signs, then you can type LaTeX math in between dollar signs and it'll behave like inline math. Um, ah, yes, uh, I forgot to show you about, I forgot to show you display math. So this is inline math. All of this that I've been showing here is inline math. So if it appears in a paragraph like this, let's say I put periods after all of these sentences. Um, so now there's no blank line between them, so it's not they're not different paragraphs. This is all one paragraph. Then it all shows up sort of on the same line. So maybe I'll say then, maybe I'll put some English to make it look more natural. It follows that. Thus, this makes no logical sense. Just it's just some nonsense. But this is what it'll what it'll look like. Ah, and it indents by default. LaTeX indents by default. So if I copy this line, where I'm setting par skip, I think you can set the length of par indent to zero. And that gets rid of the indentation. Although it insists on there being, un being units here. Okay. Anyway, it gets rid of the indentation. I personally really dislike the indentation. Um, better to separate paragraphs by uh, space, by vertical space. Yeah, so I wanted to show you display math. So here, here you see inline math. It just shows up on the same line. And then for display math, you put you put it in double dollar signs. 
So, for example, say I want to show you an integral. Here is a nice integral. Integral, maybe some Greek letters, zeta to the n, d zeta. So because this one is in double dollar signs, you can see it displays on its own line. And compare that with this situation where I put single dollar signs. If Overleaf lets me do that. Then here it is on one line, and you can see the integral symbol is sort of squished down so that it fits nicely on, on the line. So whether you use double do dollar signs or single dollar signs will affect the mode in which some symbols display themselves. So I just wanted to show you an example of what math textbooks looked like before um, LaTeX. So now they're all typeset with LaTeX, but this is kind of an older book. This is from, I think, from the 60s or maybe early 70s. Um, but yeah, look, look at this. It just looks horrible, right? I mean, forget about the, Engl the font of the, of the English writing, just the math the way the math looks and the way it fits in with the English. Like, look at where this, where this comma is relative to the symbols and how the symbols are arranged. It just looks terrible. On the other hand, uh, look at any modern papers or books and you'll probably see LaTeX. If it's math or physics or computer science, you'll probably see LaTeX there. So let me just open a... Here's the archive where people post, you know, uh, preprints for their papers. Let me just open any any paper from the last, you know, recent papers. I don't know what any of this means, but I'm just opening something. And this is LaTeX. This is all LaTeX. These equations are typeset with LaTeX. The entire paper, the entire document is typeset with LaTeX. And it's just, uh, you know, you see it everywhere. It's become a, a major standard. Yeah, so that's it for my intro. I think what I'll do is make a LaTeX help discussion uh, as its own discussion on Nectar, and I'll automatically invite everyone to that discussion, then you can just post any random little questions there and not worry about spamming the main channel. <laughs>